Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm, take two. I'm Christy, and yeah, we got a lot going on to tell you about. So we'll just move right on into it. Uh, Matthew 5, 7, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And yeah, I'm working on a little forgiveness for somebody for something, and I'll tell you all about it. So, all right, let me see. I have, it says totally hooked, but I don't know. It's not really, I'm done with it. I just got to um, tow up one thing and weave in my end. And that is the infinity scarf to go with that poncho. Um, it's got the gray side and the white side. And I'm going to, I have just enough. I'm kind of playing yarn chicken, but not really because all I have left to do is to sew it together so yeah it's not totally hooked it'll be done close enough that you guys don't need to see it again and I plan on getting that done today it's gonna get done and out of here um, <clears throat> but that's really all I have for totally hooked and you'll see why here in a minute because I just uh, <laughs> all things I must crochet and make all things no okay so um in the basket i still have this i haven't gotten a chance to really work on it um it's the kit for this month um i've got that one so that's really all i have that i've been crocheting um, but I do have a few other things. Um, I don't have anything in the pots or anything like that, but I do have stuff on the wheel. So let's talk about it. Um, you guys know that I have been exploring acrylics again. They're definitely come a long way since I used them, you know, when I was younger. And they're, some of them are pretty amazing. And some of them are not um, but I uh, went to the store looking for something to put on the peg loom and this is what I came up with so yeah I have it over here because it's long on my lap yeah. all right so this is what I've been doing on the peg loom I had it further and I, uh, I'm a perfectionist, I guess. It's a gift, and I don't want not one mistake in it. And I made a mistake, so I ripped it all out, and I started over. Yeah. Okay, so um, I ended up at Hobby Lobby, and I found this. And I wish you guys could feel this. This is so amazingly soft. And I am pretty sure that this stuff was thought of for those infinity uh or big arm blankets that people crochet in that but i stuck it on the peg loom okay and it is super soft it's going to be a little runner for someone who's borderline diabetic his feet get cold um he's older and yeah i think this is what i'm gonna give him for christmas just saying so uh, I got this and this is not the showstopper um, I don't know where the tag went for this one but it is yarn B and you get 120 yards of this for $30 so it's almost like a core spun without the core so it's just big and and flopsy but it's super soft and this will work for what I'm um, wanting to do. So, uh, yeah. I do have it. And I plan on trying to finish this today, to be honest with you. It doesn't take that long to work up a peg loom. So, and right now all I have to do is pop these off and I'll be oh, well over halfway. So, um, yep, I've got that going. And it's looking amazing. I, I really like it. Um, I use gray runners for it. Or gray warp. 
for it and it's doing really well um then and i didn't bring my bobber in hold on let me go get my bobbin okay i'm back sorry about that okay so while i was at hobby lobby exploring and looking for something to put on that peg loom i found this and this is pretty amazing if you ask me and this is that yarn b and you saw it it's showstopper okay now what is amazing to me is that this is only 15 percent wool um yeah it's 50 percent acrylic and 35 percent poly polymide i don't know what that is <coughs> but this is what we're looking at okay and again i do think that this was made for doing those fuzzy blankets i think that's what they had in mind but if you know me you know i'm going to try and spin any fuzz i can find so i started and i thought i'm going to spin this it, it's loose enough that i can spin and it is working up quite beautifully let me see if i've got a white sheet of paper here I don't know it's got writing on it of course i don't have a white piece of paper why would i have a white piece of paper okay so here it is and it is working up amazing let me see if i can pull this out it's got grays and whites and it just blends really well I don't know that you're going to see that very well. But it is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Let's see if we can get it to. And it is super, super soft. So, what can we use this for? Anything that I'm going to spin it and use it into yarn. It's 15% wool. So and the the makeup of this stuff is the same as the makeup of that it's just that's got a little twist on it and this doesn't um and this is 10 ounces for ten dollars so that's a dollar an ounce yeah um it also just says 26 yards but when you're spinning it we go by ounces we, we don't go by yards so anyway what can we use that for okay so i'm going to spin it into a yarn i'm pretty sure it was made for those arm blankets that people are making um crocheting arm crochet or whatever there are about four colors that's the only drawback is there's not a a great amount you either do lots of color there's one that's got so much color and then there's a bunch of neutrals, tans, browns, grays. And I think there's only about six kinds of each one of these at Hobby Lobby. You might be able to get online and look. I don't know. It's the Yarn B. That's the one I'm spinning is $10. The one I'm not that I'm using on the peg loom is $30. But either way, if you look at it, that's going to be... I'm making that rug for a gentleman, an older gentleman that... Um, he just older his feet swell he's you know um they thought at one time he was diabetic they're still thinking he's borderline so you know that his circulation isn't that great and he's got those uh laminate floor stuff in his bedroom so when he gets out of bed the floor is cold so i'm gonna make that and put it you know let him put it in his bedroom and that's gonna be but for 30 bucks that's i mean for as good a uh, uh, soft and as good a quality as that is i couldn't do much better and knowing that it's acrylic it'll probably last a little longer um <coughs> because he he's probably gonna wash it is what i'm getting at it's only 15 percent wool and if that 15 percent felts up it probably will just bind it together a little bit you know so i'm hoping that that does good i mean i i don't know it's one of those we'll see um these are definitely not your grandma's acrylics guys um i remember my granny making me stuff with some acrylic that 
I remember she made me some slippers once and those stitches just pressed into your feet. They were so stiff. And I mean, I just, I don't know. These are super soft and ready to go. So, um, yeah. Those are two things that I'm working on and I plan on having done. 10 ounces is quite a bit. So, and as you can see, I haven't really gotten that far on it. Uh, but I had some other things going on and we're going to learn about those too. So, all right. That's what's on the wheel. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, let's move on into this. The giveaway. First off, we still have the uh, Nearest Pride giveaway going on. So, make sure you get entered in for the uh, knitting needles. This has not been claimed yet. So, yeah, that hasn't been claimed yet. <clears throat> and I'm going to do, in two weeks, I'm going to do one more giveaway, and then we're going to rest on the giveaways for a while, and it will be a spinning giveaway. So, um, yeah, it, it'll be... I've already got it planned. I don't know what I'm going to make you enter with, but I've got it planned. <laughs> All right. So, the, next, the rest of the stuff that I have, I think, goes really in, in the farmhouse. So, we'll move on to RJ's world. Um, so, we moved the cattle down a couple weeks ago. Um, they'd been here a month or so. Anyway, they pushed through. Last week, they pushed through the neighbor's fence. And neighbor got a rude awakening because... I believe I can't remember what day it was um, anyway they pushed through I had to go to work I had them on the fence line and uh, put feed down I called RJ RJ jumped in the truck and was headed this way by the time he got here they had pinned our cattle in their round pen and said they weren't releasing them well that's illegal our cattle are branded and tagged we have 30 days to remove them before they can do anything with them. So one lady that lives behind us came out and said she was going to shoot our cattle, which is a felony. Um, RJ handled it very diplomatically because I was at work. A roommate did come home because this is roommate's land and roommate's place. And they wanted to make sure that RJ had a leg to stand on, you know they're not going to throw him to the wind either. So, um, <clears throat> RJ removed the cattle just because they were getting out. We ran uh, woven wire and I have to get out there and do tie up on it. It's up there, but it's not tied. And so, then we brought back the cattle. Mother's Day, they walked through the West End. <laughs> We have woven wire up there, but we have to clear that end, and the cattle, I guess, are eating it away and clearing it, so, yeah. It's just been one thing after another, and poor RJ was caught in the middle, but, yeah, I was furious. And, anyway, roommate contacted the owner of that land and kind of told him what for. The man's name is James, and... Uh, they let him have it because that's not how you handle things. And it, in, living in the country, you learn real fast that your neighbors you want to be neighborly with because if you're counting on 911, it'll take 20 minutes to get here. Your house would burn down by then. You know, garden hoses will save part of it, at least. Um, if you're being robbed, those people are going to be gone long before 911 gets here. And it's not through any fault of 911. Not everybody can live in the city. And it just takes that long to get to where we're going. You know, from police station to the house. 
15, 20 minutes. There's nothing you can do about that. I mean, unless you're going to invent a teleporter. So, neighbor needs to learn that living in the country, you need to be neighborly. Just saying. And roommate kind of lost it with him. They kept it together more than I thought they would. But, yeah. So, anyway, uh, there had been a little bit of an ongoing feud. Not really a feud. Roommate's mother owns this house. And back years ago, they tore up, the neighbor tore up the barn and stuff putting in his fancy fence and blah 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 and, and he they keep the mother has tried to get them to come talk to her about it to get it repaired or do you know and he won't so there's been an ongoing little turf thing going on there and uh, basically yeah we put up fresh wire and I got to get out there and finish tying it up but Yep, that's exactly what I'm going to do today. And the cattle are staying in, so we're good. It just was a mess. And because I had to leave, I don't think the other would have happened if I hadn't had to leave. But they looked at RJ and thought he's a young kid and they were going to bully him around. And that's not going to happen. And she threatened to shoot the cattle and all this stuff. And it's illegal she can't um if she does she's going to jail rj did the right thing and he filed police reports on all of it um he texted me while i was at work i stepped outside and i told him i said you get the sheriff on the phone right now and you make a police report i said if anything happens to our cattle that's where they're going to go looking because she threatened them and let her words come back to bite her in the butt you know if you're going to be mean like that and just so the cattle walk through the fence. The, th the deal is, is that part of their land, they don't use because they haven't finished the fence and anything you have can just walk right through out on the highway. So it's not like the calves were into any mischief. They simply walk through the fence. So that was going on. Thursday, I had to work half a day. Um, I locked myself out of YouTube. I know you guys noticed I was a little late uploading. Yeah. Had to get back into YouTube. Um, it's a long story, but basically I shut off my work phone that was tied to that account. And when I'm using this laptop, it wants a double verification. Well, I hadn't changed the phone number yet, so I couldn't get back in. It happens. Um, then, let's see, what else? Dealt with the cattle stuff. Thursday we fenced. Uh, I had to work. Friday. Oh. And then Saturday, I went to a farmer's market and I helped Jane. She was, I actually just held the tent while she um, taught mini spinning lessons. You know, just kind of on the fly with some pencil roving, let people sit down at her wheel and spin a little bit. And Anyway, for helping with that, she brought me this. And I don't know if you can see that. I have no idea why it, it's kind of appealing. It's got enough pink and blacks in it. I don't know if that's going to show up real well. But it's, and the pink part is pretty much like a neon pink. It's, I mean, let's see if we can get, can you see those, there we go. But some of it's blacks and reds and neon, and I don't think it's black. I think that it is um, a brown. I really do so yeah she gave me that and I love it it's you know it is what it is but then she had another friend 
who was cleaning some stuff out and was uh, getting rid of some things and Jane, she was going to just throw them away. So Jane snagged these for me. And again, remember, I'm exploring the world of acrylic. Uh, I still love wool, don't get me wrong. But she had these and they're still totally sealed up. And this one right here is the only one and it's been started. The other one hasn't even been started. Okay. Oh, and she left her hook in there too. Oh, well, that's okay. But, um, yeah, it's a pretty purple. And she has notes on there and stuff, but I probably will stick to the uh, pattern. And it's going to make this. It's a 36 diameter uh, little throw. And I wish you could feel this stuff, guys. This is... This is something you'd use for a baby blanket or it, it's just that soft. And yeah, this one on the other hand has not been started at all. And it's just a cream colored one. And it is the exact same pattern. Just one in cream and one in purple. And like I said, she has her notes and stuff in there. And I don't know if round five and round seven kind of confused her or if she, you know, I don't know, this got round eight. Anyway, it was something that somebody else was working on and they were going to just trash it. And I don't think that that's, uh, even if you don't make the same thing with it, you can still make something with it. And so... Anyway, I have these two going on, and so I'm going to put that back in there, so at least I've got the right size hook with it, but anyway, so I got those given to me, uh, and let's see, is there anything else? Oh my goodness. We talked about the cattle. I think that is about it um you do need to get in on the knitters pride knitting and here's the deal if we don't have as many people enter the knitting or the spinning as we did the crochet I probably won't do those giveaways again in other words I will stop trying to do three and I will just do one crochet type giveaway if that's what this audience is if we do have some knitters that want to get in on it make sure that you're entering on last week's video okay and that's for the knit picks um, the third one will be spinning and like I said I already have an idea for that and if nobody enters that then we just won't do the knitting in that and I'll just stick to the crochet ones. So, yeah. As much as I spin and do other things, you know, if they're not gonna go over. And I talked with RJ and he says, Mom, if this is not claimed, he said, do the drawing again and just put these two together, which is a possibility. So, I don't know. We will see. Um, just had a lot going on. I did that Saturday. Sunday was Mother's Day. Um, I haven't. I just feel like I haven't gotten that far this week. But I've gotten that and I've redone it. I've spun some. Uh, I haven't really crocheted that much. I was trying to get my little projects done. Uh, and get them out of the bags and on their way. And I was really... <laughs> trying not to start another project but I just couldn't help it this is so soft I 
couldn't help it. I just couldn't. And then the stuff for the um, peg loom. And I will tell you, uh, I'm kind of glad I had to wrap, rip it out because what I noticed is after I don't use my peg loom for a while, my tension changes and different during the different process. And so it looked cattywampus on the ends a little bit just me and I just I was kind of glad because it's the first time that I have used a peg loom in a while and it's just like my floor loom uh, I'm actually thinking that if I could get my floor loom to this house that stuff would make some awesome bathroom rugs um, I have some other things that you know I would love to make I don't know that this house has room for that loom just saying so yeah anyway so I did that Monday or Sunday that's when the cow went through the west fence RJ came down for a little bit um oh I forgot the big news in RJ's world because RJ has been in on with all the cattle stuff and he came down and helped me fence uh, Thursday morning and then I had to go to work Thursday afternoon then I worked all day Friday, uh, Mother's Day, um, Ice went to live at the M44, who is Gage and Tristan, and he went to live with Henry. And Henry is a little six-year-old, and these people are very, very dear to our hearts. Um, they are amazing. When RJ was younger, Gage was our extension agent and he was the male influence for a long time in RJ's life and he had his son six or seven years ago six years ago I can't remember and I think he just turned seven but uh, yeah Henry needed a step up horse is what we call him and he had a little pony and he could ride that little thing around but he needs a horse that, you know, will actually teach him to ride, not just trot him around there. And so, um, RJ offered an indefinite loan of ice. And that way, if they do decide they want to keep him and they want Henry to have him, he, they can purchase him. Um, ice is tropical ice that what has won all the awards at the big four by four shootout he is the horse that rj broke um he is he is the 4-h premier horse everywhere from tunica mississippi to monroe louisiana to dallas texas to this horse has been to hell and back um, with a bunch of kids riding him and him bringing them through with ribbons. Um, we laugh because at that 4x4 four four shootout where RJ did the barrels and the poles and the calf rope and the team rope and, and he won that first saddle and all these awards and the stirrups and the Anderson Bean Boots and that big one that was like the NFR of Youth Rodeo. Um, we laughed because they actually announced over the PA that if there had been a horse award, Ice would have gotten it. They watched people borrow RJ's horse right and left, and RJ still beat them on his own horse. So, yeah, Ice did, I can't remember how many events at that 4x4 four four shootout, but he was in that arena more than any other horse that was on the grounds so yeah and he still brought home all those amazing things so rj was top cowboy down there i don't remember how what they called it but yeah he did it and so ice is going to live with henry henry is probably the closest thing i've got to a grandson just saying love him to death uh, he's a pretty cool kid and he was super super stoked to 
get that. I mean, they call RJ the real deal. You know, he's a real cowboy and and they call him, they call RJ his favorite cowboy. So, um, yeah, that's, RJ is the M44's favorite cowboy. So, and that's their brand. Um, they run uh, Charlet beef cattle. So, anyway, but that happened and ICE will be down there until they figure out if, if Henry and him don't get along, he'll come home. If Henry loves him, he'll do fine. You know, it's just see how they click. And if he's down there indefinitely, he's down there indefinitely. So, um, so that went on Mon Mother's Day. And then yesterday was Monday and I worked oh, all day. I worked 12 hour shift this week. I have today and I'm just, I'm kind of puttering. Um, I'm gonna get that peg loom done. Uh, I've got some laundry going. Uh, it's supposed to rain. So I'm gonna try and get out there and get some of this fence tied up before that happens. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. <laughs> but, uh, and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and this Saturday, I have to work half a day. So, it is what it is. But, uh, I'm hoping to make a little progress. Um, this, this week has just been crazy. Um, and I just, I want to spin more than I want to crochet. But I need to get that one kit done because I'm sure one of those will be coming before too long. So, alright. I will let y'all off of here and I will talk to you next time. If you are interested in entering the Knitter's Pride interchangeable needles, last week's um, video is the one to do that, where RJ talks to you guys and made the cameo appearance. This one, if you're Karen, you need to be getting a hold of me because if this one is announced and this one's still in the house, we're going to get it out of here. I'm not holding these like we used to do. Um, they're not indefinite. I'm going to put a two-week period on it. You have two weeks to contact me for this. The email is in the description box down below. Um, yeah, it's that simple to get a hold of me. Just email me. Shoot me an email. Say, hey, I'm Karen. Here's where to mail it. Uh, but we haven't ha heard that yet, so we will get on it. And like I said, next week, what we might do is redraw for this or pop it on with this. I don't know. Give me your thoughts. So, I will talk at y'all later. Have a good one. Try to stay dry. It's gotten cold again here, so yeah. <laughs> talk at you later. Bye.